Tomorrow is never promised. You never know when the last time will be. Now at 10, a somber gathering. How friends and loved ones are remembering a young mother killed near a downtown nightclub over the weekend. Plus, deputies identifying a suspected killer from a 50-year-old cold case in Uinta County. Tonight, we're hearing from the victim's family as they share one of their very last memories of him. And we're finally getting a break from the inversion in northern Utah today. But what does Mother Nature have in store for the holiday weekend? We're breaking it all down in Utah's most accurate forecast. Live, we're there for you. ABC4 News at 10 starts now. Welcome to ABC4 News at 10. I'm Glenn Mills. And I'm Courtney Johns in for Emily Flores. We begin tonight looking outside at those roads. This is I-15 at 2100 North in Lehigh. And as you can see, few people are out and about tonight, possibly heading out of town for the holidays. But if you're heading out tomorrow, odds are you're wondering what that weather is going to look like. Yep, and a lot of people will be on those roads. So let's check in with Chief Meteorologist Lana Brophy, who has all the details for us. Hi, friends. We start in the skies because we know today's a busy travel day and we had a quick moving cold front come through. Let's take a look at delays right now across the country. Our storm system has exited and you can see on the satellite here moved into the Colorado area where we have those active skies. We are seeing delays in New York at all three airports, as well as uh, Dallas Fort Worth, where we've seen more than 80 flights delayed. But other than that, pretty smooth travel throughout the country. Again, active skies over Colorado and wet weather moving into the southern plains and towards the Gulf. As we take a look at what's going on throughout the country, you can see most of that activity will stay towards the central and eastern United States. High pressure taking control tonight following that front in the Beehive State. We've got northerly flow, which is why those clouds move from north to south on the satellite. This morning, waking up to that skiff of snow. This was the ABC4 studios. That quick moving front didn't have a lot of moisture with it, but it changed things up just a little bit. As we look at the moisture totals, only about a half an inch was the high one in Heber, just over a trace along other locations for the Wasatch Front. Salt Lake International pick up their second measurable moisture, measurable snow of the season, and it was just barely over a trace. Now, we know that front also helped us out, and in the last couple of hours, we know that it's moved into southern Utah. In the last half hour, a wind advisory has has been posted for Washington County. We've talked about this throughout the week. That northerly flow really enhances the canyon winds in this wind advisory. New tonight will hold until 8 a.m. tomorrow morning. Wind gusts up to 55 miles per hour in and around Washington County near Zion National Park, Santa Clara, Ivins with relaxing winds in the St. George area, but still a little breezy, noteworthy. Okay, we've got to talk about how the winds are going to impact our air quality coming up in my full forecast in just a few moments. Glenn, Courtney, over to you. All right, thank you, Alana. And now to developing news out of Davis County. Police are investigating after two bodies were found inside a home near 7th North and 10th West in Clearfield. Police say just after 3 o'clock today, a woman who lives in the home found the two victims. Authorities say a man who is related to the victims and lives at the home was still inside when officers arrived. We spoke to neighbors who say they've lived in this area for 32 years. They say an older couple lives in the home with an older daughter and son who live in the basement. They tell us they are shocked to hear what has happened. We all help each other and say hi and wave at each other. And so we know each other. Police are expected to release more details later tonight and tomorrow. We will bring you the latest information on this as soon as it becomes available on air and online at ABC4.com. And new at 10, we are getting a look at the man police believe shot up a gay nightclub in Colorado Springs over the weekend. Police releasing these photos of 22-year-old Anderson Lee Aldrich. Today, he made his first court appearance since that deadly shooting. The judge ordering Aldrich be held without bond at that hearing. He's accused of killing five people and wounding 17 others, opening fire at Club Q. Authorities are still trying to find a motive. Aldrich faces possible murder and hate crime charges. Back here at home, dozens of Utahns gathering in downtown Salt Lake City to pay their respects to those whose lives were lost during that shooting in Colorado Springs over the weekend. Tonight, members of the LGBTQ plus community, along with friends and allies, taking to Washington Square Park, holding a visual dedication for those affected by the shooting at Club Q. Organizers say it's important to keep the conversation about tra tragic events like this going, regardless if you're personally impacted or not. It's not like it's just an attack on queer people, it's an attack on people wanting to live their lives the way they want to. 
A campaign has been set up to support survivors and families impacted. Those can be made to Colorado Healing Fund. You can find more information at the website you see right there on the screen. Meanwhile, just a few blocks away, others are remembering a young mother killed outside of a downtown Salt Lake City nightclub early Sunday morning. Friends and loved ones gathering for a vigil near the scene where 29-year-old Nicole Olson was shot and killed. Police say 37-year-old Dustin Peterson turned himself in and is now being charged with murder. On Sunday, police say Peterson and his friend were arguing with the victim's boyfriend at the nightclub. That led to Peterson shooting and killing 29-year-old Olson. We spoke with a lifelong friend of Nicole's who says her passing is a good reminder of why it's so important to constantly tell those you care about how much you love them. I love you, Nick, and I wish you were with us. And um, I'll never forget all the times we had growing up. Olson leaving behind a nine-year-old son, family members still working out the funeral details. If you'd like to help out, we have a link to a GoFundMe account set up in her honor on our website, abc4.com. Uinta County investigators say they have made major headway in a murder rape case from the 70s. They've identified a suspect, but they say their work is just beginning. Tonight, we spoke to a family member about what this means decades later. I still see him walking out the door that night with a grin on his face and a big wave of his hand. Catch you later, folks, he said as he went out that door. That is Lynette Ray's last memory of her brother, Greg Nickel. And take a girl out on a date and get gunned down at the scenic view. You know, it just doesn't make any sense at all. November 26th, 1972. Police say a man walked up to the car, shot Greg, and stole the vehicle. The couple still inside. The man meets up with his accomplice, and the two set Greg's car on fire and kidnap the woman. Both men raped her and left her on the side of a highway near Duchesne. We can't find a motive. There doesn't seem to be a person or anywhere that we can find that has one thing against Greg. Everybody loved him. Nearly 50 years later, Lynette says she's never stopped looking for his killer. I made this promise to Greg that I was not going to let this go. That promise, one step closer to being fulfilled. Evidence from the sexual assault matching a man's DNA. I mean, we've had hundreds of possible suspects and leads and just like I was saying, taking us down these, these roads. And it was a name that had never been looked at, had never been wrote down anywhere. His name? Daniel Bell. I had never heard that name in my life. Bell's DNA was in the database after he did time for a different sexual assault back in 1988. Why? Why did you do this? There's no earthly reason why you did this. Lynette will never get to ask him that question. Bell died in 2019. But between identifying Bell and having another set of unidentified DNA, authorities have hope. We have such a good profile that if we get a lead or someone, we can swab them and both, it's them or it's not. Literally, it will be that easy. Lynette says all she wants to do is finally tell her brother the words she's said countless times in her heart. I'm coming, brother. I'm trying. I'm trying the best I can. I'm going to get it. I'm going to, I'm go, I'm going to find you justice. The woman who was attacked told police the men covered her head when they kidnapped her, but she heard them use the names Tex and Johnny. If you have any information, please contact authorities. We've listed that number on our website and at the bottom of the screen right here. You can see it on our website at abc4.com. Police in Roy issuing a warning to buckle up this holiday weekend. The police department says they'll be enforcing seatbelt violations as part of Utah's click it or ticket campaign. Those offenders caught may face a citation, something Roy City Police say they'd rather not do, but they will if they need to. That citation can run you 45 bucks. The busiest travel week of the year, it's underway with 55 million Americans driving or flying this Thanksgiving holiday. Officials over at Salt Lake City International Airport are expecting 30,000 people to have flown out today alone. Today, we spoke with some of those people at the airport, many saying they were concerned about how the holiday rush would affect their travel. One family heading to Hawaii saying they came two and a half hours early because they were worried about how busy the airport would be, especially when they heard how hectic it was for others. 
Our friends went out yesterday and they said that they arrived a couple hours early and there still was like, there was only 30 minutes for them to get on their flight, so they were cutting it pretty close. To beat those close conditions, officials over at the airport have a few tips for you. They say to make sure you plan ahead for traffic, come two to three hours before your plane takes off and make sure to check in online ahead of time. And as we get even closer to Thanksgiving, the community is giving back. ABC4's Ali O'Rulin met with the governor and rescue mission in Salt Lake to find out how we can help our communities this holiday season. Putting the give in Thanksgiving. We have the best people in the world right here. We care about our neighbors. We have a sense of community. Uh, people are willing to give back. Utahns are taking time for community outreach, especially when it comes to serving those without homes. So hope starts with a meal. A now 16-year tradition, Governor Spencer Cox, Lieutenant Governor Deidre Henderson, and their families helping serve meals for Utahns living on the streets at Rescue Mission Salt Lake. We are anticipating serving um, 1,200 meals, 1,200 to 1,500 meals. Those without a home coming together for a warm Thanksgiving plate, some music, and a place to eat. The organization also providing clothes, sanitary products, showers, haircuts, and vaccines for anyone in need. And as the community continues to help during the holidays, organizations are suggesting ways to do so effectively. The rescue mission is in need of coats and winter socks just to be helping our homeless friends stay safe this winter. Supplies like toothbrushes and underwear are also welcome donations, and they suggest always going through an organization to help. They say having government leaders volunteer makes a big difference. You know, the, the governor and the lieutenant governor are, are seeing the needs of the homeless face to face. They're looking at our homeless friends directly in the eye and they're seeing them as a human being. And when it comes to improving the lives of our homeless population, Governor Cox says it starts with affordable housing. The best way to prevent homelessness is to have more homes available and to have them more affordable. And uh, that's going to be a major focus for me and I hope a major focus for the legislature. Reporting in Salt Lake City, I'm Ali O'Rulian, ABC4 News. Coming up, the latest in the investigation into the murders of four University of Idaho students. Why police are debunking rumors that one of the victims may have had a stalker. Plus, this is what it looked like as that weak cold front came through and delivered some snow showers to the mountains. Great shot from Alta. This is what followed the sunset in Sandy. Thanks, Don, for sending it our way. Cleaner conditions, cleaner air, but how long will it last? Answers coming up in your Thanksgiving forecast.